Today we are in conversation with Mr. Ajay Menocha, who is a finance professional with around seven years of experience. He is a graduate of IIM Indore 2015 batch and a CFA. Welcome and thank you so much for talking to us. Thanks, Nithi. Tell us about your life journey. Uh, while reflecting on my life, uh, I would say it has been full of uh, extended periods of glory as well as some gloomy periods as well. Uh, why I say because, uh, you know, when I look back, I think uh, despite whatever limitations I might have, uh, I have been able to do uh, reasonably satisfactory to my level, but uh, the, the hunger to succeed still remains. So I was born with uh, a degenerative eye condition called retinitis pigmentosa, which means that uh, I was born with around only 30% of usable vision in both my eyes. Uh, when I was, uh, when my parents took me to a school uh, for an admission, majority of them were not ready to admit uh, a child with a special need. Uh, but my parents ha were very firm on this uh, idea that our child should get education and that too from a mainstream school. Because they thought that uh, after the schooling and once the child grows up, he at the end of the day has to adjust within the society. So he should be accustomed to that since the early childhood itself. So that's how this inclusive education idea was born. I ended up completing my education from a Hindi medium school uh, to 12th standard. I took up commerce and shortly afterwards uh, completing my schooling, I got to know about a talking software called JAWS, which converts the text visible on a computer screen to synthetic speech, thereby enabling me to use a computer. Uh, my world turned upside down uh, after that discovery. I was like, okay, finally there is a chance to do something beyond uh, what I or in fact my family wouldn't have even thought about. So that was the time when I started learning how to operate a computer with JAWS and uh, I enrolled myself for a graduation in the local government college there. There, uh, in next two years, uh, I actually ended up losing whatever vision I had. So I became uh, completely blind by the age of 19. But luckily, because I had migrated to, I would say, or I had learned assistive technology beforehand, it was pretty easy for me to transition, or I would say it was not as hard as it would, it would have become. Uh, to e-text and then I ended up getting selected by Indian Institute of Management in Dor for a postgraduate program. Uh, life there was very difficult of course competing with the uh, country's best minds but um, I would say uh, my perseverance and uh, what should I say I mean I, I have been a bit rebellious kid on the side so you know it, it paid off and I somehow persisted and uh, completed my post-graduation and got employed by a leading foreign bank. Now, uh, later on, I also decided to enroll for uh, the Chartered Financial Analyst program and in 2019, I became uh, the first bank person in India to receive a CFA charter. Uh, today, I have around more than seven year for work, years of work experience from across various domains within financial services industry. And uh, I work with a leading consulting firm. And uh, yes, when I look forward, uh, I have high hopes from the future as well. That's very nice. Tell us, um, uh, when did you first hear about uh, RP as a condition? Uh, because I was born with this condition, uh, while growing up, I knew that there is not something which is not right with my eyesight. Mm -hmm. Although I got to know about RP as a term quite later on in my life, maybe in my teen years, but I knew that my eyes are not so-called normal. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have an elder sister who also has this condition, although she still has some usable vision. And uh, yes, so it was not completely unfamiliar, but yes, the extent of the condition uh, is something which uh, kind of took us off guard and yes it did take uh, a while uh, for me as well as my family to process uh, this truth that uh, this condition is not curable and uh, it may even result in further reduction of vision 
but uh, yes they were familiar but still it, it took us a while to accept i would say you mentioned about jaws and you know how its discovery changed your life tell us what else you did to prepare for your life ahead after your diagnosis so uh, when i got di- uh, i would say diagnosis was pretty early in my life but when i actually lost my vision uh, when i was 19 uh, i had a strange sense of calm uh, you know uh, earlier uh, people used to say okay i can see less uh, you know i'm a person with low vision how much low that no one including myself could define so the 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 factor which contributed towards that calmness or i would say that unusual calmness uh, and which enabled me to in turn deal with this uh, sudden uh, decay in my vision was okay now i can finally say that okay i can't see no more confusions nothing uh, it's 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 kind of a black and white situation for me now i can tell that okay i can't see which in turn uh, you know made me accept the condition and also ask for help wherever required uh, i started using a white cane to move around to improve my mobility and uh, uh, talking softwares in my mobile phone and wherever other assistive devices were necessary which empowered me quite a bit so i would say the feeling of uh, you know okay now nothing more can go wrong was a was a great enabler at that time and uh, it actually helped me to uh, i would say come up uh, from that uh, setback in the life as we may call and uh, you know continue my studies and probably emerge as a better person there isn't that much awareness about rp what do you think we can all do together to improve awareness about rp as a condition so uh, it's it's honestly very uh, very difficult even today as well for uh, families whose children or whose loved ones get diagnosed with this condition because as you rightly said there is no awareness but the biggest uh, thing we can do is to uh, make our ophthalmologists aware about the condition and not only the condition they are already aware about the clinical part but make them aware about the rehabilitation journey as well as to uh a person has rp now what are the other assistive technology options the person can use maybe magnification tools maybe screen reading softwares uh or if 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 he or she is a child and they are comfortable braille audio there are so many uh various paths and ways through which one can actually grow ahead in their lives so it's very important to you know end this notion that if one is diagnosed with rp or one has lost their vision because of rp the life is finished no that doesn't happen so the biggest part when it comes to awareness is making people aware and especially the ophthalmologists aware because they are the first contact with the patient uh aware that okay there are lot many tools available for a person's successful and in fact a very good rehabilitation where they can continue to lead a very fulfilling life wonderful was there an ecosystem that came together to help you i would say yes and uh, no uh, there have because uh, you know i when i lost my vision uh, there 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 was a mailing list uh, called access india which i joined uh, which helped me connect with a uh, lot of individuals from uh, various streams say be professors be it civil servants be it uh, corporate professionals so it 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 if if social media and mailing lists can be called as an ecosystem yes of course it it helped me quite a bit and also like uh, national association for the blind uh, faridabad from where uh, i got a trainer who 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 taught me to, how to use computers and the the kind of informal network and a very powerful network that we continue to leverage in this state of persons with vision impairment is i guess uh, the biggest asset and uh, an ecosystem which helps you know uh, in every aspect of life i would say wonderful tell us as a society what can each of us do to make this a more inclusive world see 
uh, when we talk about inclusivity, the, the the biggest step or the biggest change we have to bring is our attitude. So, you know, uh, one has to accept that vision impairment is a condition, it's not a disease and it's not uh, something to be sympathetic about. But yes, for sure be empathetic about. So. One needs to understand the challenges with empathy, but there is no need to be utterly sympathetic as well as completely dismissive of the challenges faced by persons with disabilities and persons with vision impairment. So, and also, you know, accept the fact when we go on the path of empathy and we don't show either too much pity or I would say too much indifference towards the persons with disabilities, we then start to recognize their capabilities. Uh, and then we are able to see their capabilities first. And yes, there are certain limitations, of course, but who doesn't have that? All of us, uh, maybe for some it's visible, for some it's not, but all of us have some or the other limitations. So it's about us to have that empathetic, neutral kind of an attitude for persons with disabilities, which is the first step towards inclusion, followed by, of course, following, recognizing them and focusing on their capabilities and supporting them wherever uh, wherever required when it comes to their limitations. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. Thanks, my pleasure.